home and away at 25 past one today. Now, though, Craig is confronted with the harsh truth in Shortland Street. Let's start. You're in the cardiac recovery program, no stress. I'll be far more relaxed doing some real work than being upstairs pushing a flaming pen around. Uh, we can't take any more. We need to go and ambulance bypass. That's my decision. We're not doing it. Don't just stand there. Find a bed for this patient. You are constantly botching things up. You are slow, incompetent and clueless. Why don't you just go home? If you can't handle the pressure, don't make everyone else suffer. Whatever stupid point you're trying to prove, don't do it at our expense. Why did I have to shoot my mouth off? Why couldn't I just take a deep breath and move on? You were being a good nurse and you stood up for a member of staff who needed standing up for. No, I was being a bad nurse who publicly humiliated her HOD, not to mention a girlfriend and publicly humiliated her boyfriend. Well, somebody needed to do it and if it wasn't you, it probably would have been me. <laughs> no offence, but if that was meant to make me feel better, it didn't. Look. Craig can dish it out, but he can't take it. Everybody knows that. And I know from personal experience that he gets over these things pretty quickly. If you keep your head down and give him some space to calm down. So, your appointment at the fracture clinic will be Friday. But you said it was supposed to be Thursday. I did. I'm sorry, my mistake. Oh, my feet are okay. Telling me. And you must be due for a break. Want to come and listen to me win? No. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Wow, you're shaking. What's happened? I'm fine. I don't think so. Come on, I'll buy you a coffee. <gasps> no way! What? No way could they have possibly chosen him for Brenda's replacement. Oh, detour. We have to find Maya. Go, go. Look, I'm just saying it mightn't be as bad as you think. Which part of my face splattered all over a gay safe sex campaign is not bad? Well, yeah, but some of the photos were kind of arty and out of focus. Maybe they'll use those. You want cheese? No, and the reason they're out of focus is because they were crap. Trust me, those are the first shots they'll bin. Oh, what? You know, I hate to admit it, but I think I'm actually going to have to wear this. In short, I'm stuffed. Well, don't go all ballistic at me for suggesting this, but you could always tell Mum and Dad. Mm. <laughs> well, why not? They might be able to help. Yeah, and then torture me with guilt trips for the next 12 months. I'd rather choke on my own vomit. Your funeral. I can handle it. Nice of them to inform me that homophobic jerk is coming back. Nice of them to let me know that they don't think I can do the job. We don't actually know that for sure. Why else would he be here? Who's here? Scotty. He is so tough. Look, stop taking this so personally, okay? How else am I supposed to take it? You're pregnant. Maybe a little less pressure is what you need, not more. Less pressure. Working with that lesbian hater is supposed to put me under less pressure. He hates lesbians? Yes. He's ex-army and don't you know it. Anything that's not by the book, right on time or an inch out of place is pretty much stuffed. He sounds awful. <sighs> awful. If you think Craig is mean, wait till you meet Scotty. Check it out, fag. Little fag all by herself. I think she's lonely. G'day, fag nuts. Love your makeup, mate. Boyfriend bite for you? Piss off. She needs a dead leg. Get off! I think she likes it. Hey! You better run, fag nuts! Unbelievable. You were there. Why didn't you say something? Craig can't get away with that. Can we talk about something else? No. Hey, go, Alice. At least someone stood up to him. Yay, go me. Just relax. I can't understand why he took on more casualties. You guys were chocker. We deal with big casualty intakes all the time. Then why did he have to spaz out? All I'm saying is that Craig had every reason to believe that we could handle it. He's one of the best ED consultants around. We're lucky to have him. Well, come on. It was fun to shift it up a gear. I mean, Craig's a machine when he gets going. You're right. It was my fault Craig got angry. No matter how hard I try, I always seem to annoy him. You just happened to be in the firing line. He was a bit stressed. A bit. He has been through a lot lately. We all have. Everyone has personal dramas all the time. Yeah, but you imagine being a guy and having a heart attack that young. Everyone's fussing around him, telling him he can't do things. He, 
probably feels emasculated. He's probably trying to prove himself. Whatever. He was under pressure, he mouthed off a bit. There's nothing to do with him feeling less of a man. Maybe you've got a point there, honey. No woman I know would treat one of her staff in such a demeaning way. No woman would actually even get away with it. Mm. The tribe has spoken. Well, since I started this little fire, I guess I should be the one to put it out. I'll go and talk to him. Are you sure you want to do that? Hmm. Sorry for the delay, folks, but we are getting there. Mrs. Shepherd. Dad? Ah, oh, son, what are you doing here? Um, I kind of need to talk to you about something. Uh, are you a crook? Not exactly. Um, well, you're going to have to wait, all right? Uh, in you go, Mrs. Shepherd. Actually, it's kind of urgent. Um, I need your advice. Yeah? Well, come on, son. Time is money. Bingo. What, you need some cash? Yeah, um, for the movies. Uh, 40, OK? Yeah, look, you're going to have to bother your mother. I haven't got any money. Uh, sorry, I haven't got time, mate. Sorry. What? I wanted to say sorry, and I wanted the chance to explain. Go ahead, then. I'm listening. Uh, I shouldn't have spoken to you like that in front of everyone. It was disrespectful and disloyal, and I was wrong. But I stand by everything I said. The way you spoke to Shanti was out of order. As a senior nurse, it's my responsibility to look out for my colleagues. It's also my job to ensure that patients get the best care possible. Things were getting out of control, and I think if you were being honest with yourself, you'd admit they were too. You finished? Good. There's the door. Good to see you, Scotty. Getting you at such short notice is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> Glad to help. Good timing for me, too. I was looking for something more permanent. Oh, time to put down a few roots, eh? More ready to do my bit, I guess. Put all that leadership training to use. Ah, oh, you can take the man out of the army. <laughs> Not a lot of difference when you think about it. A whole lot of people working towards a common goal. Both need good systems, both need discipline, both need good leadership. Courage, commitment and comradeship, right? Don't forget integrity. <laughs> Anyway, I've got a whole heap of ideas I'd like to discuss when you've got time. Excellent. In the meantime, I'm afraid I'll have to throw you in the deep end. Brenda's moved on already. What's the story there? Actually, she's still on staff, uh, focusing more on her nurse educator role. It didn't work out. I only asked because I was the one who recommended her for the job. I'd hate to think I'd let you down on that front. There have been a few problems, but you are in no way responsible. Brenda's been incredibly divisive. You will notice that there is a lot of ill feeling between the doctors and the nurses right now. It's something I'd like you to tackle. Of course. The other thing you need to know is that Brenda recently fell off the wagon. Booze? Apart from a brief lapse some months ago, she's had it under control for years. Uh, recently, she had a difficult time personally. Still, I had to take some action, hence the demotion. Anyway, part of my agreeing to keep her on was making AA meetings a condition of her employment. Okay. It's a sensitive issue. I'd appreciate your discretion. Right. Better get you set up. I did mention that you're a godsend, didn't I? <laughs> You'd think for 80 bucks a head they could have put on something decent to eat. Anything to dull the pain of that last speaker. His hairpiece. I know. <laughs> I'll catch you up. It's the school holidays and you're not at the mall or physically attached to a game centre. Something is definitely wrong with this picture. It's very funny. You must be bored. That all broke, which is it? No smart comeback either. OK. I just came to say hi, that's all. What's up? Well... Come on, sweetheart, it's OK. I have to warn you, it's not good. Look at me. Now, give me your hand. Keep looking at me. Don't look down. I said, don't look down. Oh, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Breathe, breathe. Just keep looking at me in the eye. Oh, it squirmed. I can't do this. 
honey, look at me. Yes, you can. Look at me. Breathe in and out. In and out. That's still squirming. So don't think about it. Just breathe. Oh, my goodness. You're right? Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm okay. I think I'm doing it. You did it. <laughs> You have performed a miracle. I, I never thought I would touch one. <laughs> I knew you could, all by yourself. <laughs> well, I guess it must be your turn now. Well, time to put you up in the air. Mm, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people. We've completed the theoretical part of the session. Now, it's time for the good stuff. Behind me is a flight simulator. I know. It's probably the last thing you feel like doing. But think of it as flying with training wheels. It's all about familiarising and normalising the experience of being on a plane. And once you know what those sounds and sensations are all about, well, you'll feel a lot more in control. That's half the battle, I reckon. OK, team? Follow me. My palms are sweaty. You'll be fine. You're sick. If I can do a live worm, you can do a fake plane. Oh, I'm not so sure anymore. Remember why you're here, Sam. You have to get to Thailand to have the operation. You want this, am I right? I wanted to be rid of this man's body for as long as I can remember. Now I owe it to the person I really believe I am inside to get over myself this minute. And I'm going to be right here helping you. So, ready to take the bull by the horns, so to speak? Ready as I'll ever be. Right, let's go. So, it's you and a girl? Yes. And you're naked? Hardly. We're in bed. I mean, they're going to put the posters on buses and in waiting rooms. My boys aren't going to be out there. It's tasteful, so what's the problem? Well, safe sex is a complex issue. Like, kids today don't limit themselves when it comes to your various options. Options? What are you talking about? Positions? What? I'm saying that there's other combinations other than your classic boy-girl. So, it's not you and a girl in bed? Yes. It's you and two girls? No. It's more like girl boy and another boy. Oh, Hunter. Oh. The way to reduce the number of drug errors is a back-to-basics awareness scheme, I reckon. Less confusion, less error. Good. I'd like to set up a nurses' committee, too. Get some ownership happening. Impressive. I like it. Hi, um... I'm so sorry. This is totally unprofessional. Please believe it was an accident. Can't imagine you'd want to do it on purpose, Nurse Kumari. Need a hand? No, no. I'll be getting back to work now. We will be taking off shortly, so please ensure to run to your safety checks by ensuring your seat backs are upright, your tray table is folded away, and your seat belt is firmly fastened. Remember, we are specially trained to make this flight safe and enjoyable for you. Thank you. See, look how well you're doing. Now, as I mentioned, everything you're about to hear and see on the simulator is exactly what it's like on a real flight and we'll explain what's happening every step of the way. Pretty soon we're going to be taking off, and that means a lot of engine noise. But engine noise is good. It shows everything's working. How about a magazine? Oh, one each. Oh, we're on. <laughs> oh, I wish we were going to Fiji. Oh. Looks so nice, doesn't it? On the belt. What? It's too tight. Oh, and it looks fine too. Oh, it's cutting into me. It's too tight. Well, let's just unbuckle it so we can loosen it off. Uh, uh, Samantha, come back here this minute. Oh, I'm out of here too. Oh. I got in my way. Fast, 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 fast. So, instead of drowning my sorrows like a normal person, here I am waiting for round two. You fed it, right? Nope. Anyone who treated me like that in the past, I'd be out the door. You must love them then. I don't do love, remember? 
doctor and says, I don't know what I feel anymore. When we first got together, it was amazing. That's what it lasted. Hey, early days to be saying that. In a matter of weeks, I've gone from object of desire to nursemaid and nag. Not much fun, really, but I'm hanging in there. And if Craig had had the heart attack, you reckon you'd still be around? Things sure as hell wouldn't have got as screwy as they have. I've wanted to be there, though. When I thought he was going to die, I nearly did too. Mushy enough for you. You say mushy. I say it sounds as though you've got something worth fighting for. At least just hope Valentine feels the same way. I've done it. I've really done it this time. Not Craig again. Worse. Much, much worse. This has got to be the stupidest thing you've ever done. Bedroom now. How bad are they? Well, they're not bad. They're... Well, you said they're explicit. How explicit? You can't see anything. I guess it's more what they're suggesting. We told you that any modelling jobs would have come through us. We don't just say things for the sake of it. We say them for a reason. Why would you deliberately do this to yourself? That photographer should not have been allowed to take photos of you. <laughs> There's no way anyone can legally take photos like that of a 17-year-old. Did you sign anything? Did they ask your age then? I lied. What? I lied. I told them I was 18. Unbelievable. Well, the fact is that you are not 18, so they'll have no choice but to back off. Right. What's the photographer's name? Polly. Polly who? Polly Deeker. Right. You get Polly Deeker's phone number. I'm going to put a stop to this right now. Off you go. I can't. You can. You just need to relax and take your time. That is all. I don't need time. Time isn't going to do anything. Oh. I'm not going back in there. I couldn't breathe. I still can't breathe. I'm not surprised the state you got yourself into. You've done so well already. Just getting inside the simulator is a big step. Next time you need to stay longer. There isn't going to be a next time. I'm over it. It's finished. I'm only trying to... Oh, don't! In fact, you can take your concerned mumsy routine and shove it. Why are you doing this? Leave me the hell alone. Got a minute? No. You've come to the go at me, you're too late. Alice got in first. Yeah, I figured that. This is none of your damn business, Sarah. It became my business when Alice called me in to help. She called you in? Yep. And she did the right thing. The amount of stress you put your staff under this afternoon was ludicrous. I can't believe you'd take on such a huge workload without help. She shouldn't have undermined me like that. And neither should you, you might too, I see, for God's sake. Do you have any idea how worn down your team is? They have given you nothing but support since you came back, and what do they get in return? An insane workload and constant reminders that they're useless and can't keep up. They used to respect you. I haven't asked anybody to do something I wouldn't do myself. If they can't handle that, maybe they should leave. Craig, where is this coming from? First of all, there was that ridiculous bet, I can put through more patients than you can, and now the bullying, it's not like you. I've upped my game. Maybe you should try it too. <sighs> OK. Knock yourself out. This is the worst day of my life. <laughs> Why are you dressed like that? Geriatric vomit all over my uniform. This was all I could find. <laughs> it's not funny. You need a coffee. <laughs> hey, just because you get abused by the head of ED, then humiliate yourself in front of the new nursing manager and get vomited on does not mean you should give up. Nursing is a very rewarding profession. You're very lucky to be here. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to laugh again. <laughs> Don't. Forget the nursing. I want to be a dancer. Yeah. Come on, I need some music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to teach me that Marco go crazy. All <laughs> men go crazy for this. You probably thought Indian girls were shy. You were wrong. We are sex goddesses all. I'm looking for Maya. Could you tell me where to find her, please? Um, she's gone home for the day, I, I believe.
break's over. Make yourselves useful. <laughs> oh, you are so disgusting. <laughs> don't pretend you don't love it. You're such a total brat, Hunter. <laughs> Sophie's just jealous. Uh, of what? Well, I have a little drama and mum and dad fall over themselves trying to rescue me. When you had one, they thought you were crazy, remember? Shut up. <laughs> I so like you better when you're packing yourself. Well, that was a bloody waste of time. What happened? She's already printed them. What? They've been sent to hospitals throughout the country. The only way we can stop the whole thing is if we recall all the posters and pay 20 grand to have them reshot. So you paid her, right? Like how? We need a drink. <laughs> so we can toast our pride and joy. National poster boy for the clap. So I asked myself, Alice, after a hard day at the coalface, what does every consultant crave? Noodles. Healthy, yummy, and served with a big grovelly smile. Okay, we're not loving the noodles. You called Sarah in. Sorry? You thought I couldn't cope. You went behind my back. Alice, there is a reason I'm paid to run the emergency department. When I make judgement calls, I make the right ones. When I reach the point where I can no longer make the right calls, I will quit. Where do you get up undermining me like that? And at home every five minutes, you're watching what I eat or reminding me to take my pills? I don't need a mother or a nursemaid, okay? I'm not a child. I'm a grown man. He's terrified that because he's had a heart attack, his dick is going to fall off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made you feel weak and useless. I could have handled things differently. But I will not sit there and watch you take all your vain, macho insecurities out on people who don't deserve it. You have to accept what's happening to you and deal with it like a grown man. Get out. Excuse me? Leave. No, Craig, we have to sort this out. With the help of medical and fitness experts, Catherine Thomas puts the new hopefuls through their paces on a mission to get in shape in Operation Transformation Wednesday night at 8.30 here on RTE1.